Good evening, and welcome to Prophetic News Tonight. We received an End Times prophetic update from Joseph Morris. Joseph gives us a prophetic update about the setup for the Ezekiel 38 war. Let's go to him now. Uh, it, it's remarkable what's happened the last few weeks. We're going to get into it here in a minute. Just the things that have happened are totally the biggest setup for the Ezekiel 38 war that I've probably seen so far. But the reason why we get into it is Jesus told the, the disciples and then we rebuked the crowd one time, rebuked the Pharisees over and over and over again. Why? Because he said, OK, to the crowd, you can tell what the weather's going to be, but you don't know your hour of visitation. So he wanted them to know uh, when, when it was. And same thing for in the Old Testament. He had the tribe of Issachar that had an understanding of the times to know what the children of Israel ought to do, indicating if you don't know what time it is, you won't know what to do. I freak out when I'm watching college football. If it looks like the quarterback's not looking at the play clock, I go crazy yelling at the TV because if you don't, if you don't know the countdown's happening, you don't change. You don't hustle. So as we get into the things this week of what's happened in Israel this week, it shows us blatantly how close we are to the second coming, much less the rapture seven years before that. So let's pick up on what's happened in Israel this last week. The main thing was that Hezbollah keeps sending rockets, keeps sending missiles. Same thing with Hamas, which you think that would have stopped by now. But Hezbollah sent a couple of drones down into the center part of Israel and, and exploded there uh, like a suicide drone and it injured 67 Israelis and there were four of them in really bad shape. But Israel is getting ready to retaliate because they're going to get ready to hit Iran. Why would they hit Iran? Because of what Iran did in April. So all this last week has been a total setup for what's going to happen with Israel hitting Iran to the point that it's freaking everybody out. I mean, even America is telling Israel, don't, don't overdo it. Don't do this. Offered them a certain amount of money. And even said, uh, Israel, America said to Israel, if you don't put aid in Gaza, you're not going to have any, if that doesn't happen in 30 days, you're not going to have any more weaponry. So Israel responded about the stuff with Iran today and yesterday and the day before with masses amount of information going to the Jerusalem Post, showing how strong they are and how ready they are for war. I mean, uh, we'll go through some of it, and it's just remarkable. But you had other things happen before we go. We'll come back to that in a minute. But you had Emmanuel Macron talking with Netanyahu, actually harassing Netanyahu, saying, now look, America, Israel came about because of the U.N., and so the U.N. is telling you not to do this to attack these other nations. And it's interesting, the U.N. only did thousands of documents against Israel every single time. And I like what Netanyahu said to Macron. He said, no, actually, it wasn't the U.N. It was the War of Independence, and you had Israelis lose their lives to win their land back and get their country back. So there were people that were in the Holocaust that fought in that War of Independence in 1948, and that's exactly when Israel was regathered, 1948. But you have more. I mean, it's uh, the crazy stuff with Russia. You have T Turkey's President Erdogan making a pact this week. And he's always done some things in the last few weeks about calling on Islam. He made a pact with Russia and a pact with Syria and, and, when you, and Iran. So you've got Turkey joining together. Now, those are the main nations for the Ezekiel 38 war. I know it happens every week. Something more blatant gets about it. But, I mean, Turkey's going ballistic about this. And then having M Emmanuel Macron uh, coming against Netanyahu, that's pretty crazy crazy. But Emmanuel Macron said, he, he went back and said, we need to have literally a UN meeting in Lebanon. He said, we, this is what he said. He said, we need to have, have a new world order. And then they brought about it into the United States, into the UN building in, in New York and said this last week, we need a new world order. So there's this push and this cry for the Antichrist to come on the scene to bring peace. And it's absolutely ridiculous. But listen to what Israel said about Iran. I love this. Israel started talking about their weaponry. They started talking about their first uh, number of missiles. They're called rampage, rampage missiles. And what they are is uh, they, were, they were basically bombs that got retrofitted to be fitted on F-16s and F-15s and F-35s. And then they put in some new fuel tanks on there because this is an 1,800-mile jaunt from Israel over to Iran. So everybody's going, they can't do that. They changed their tanks out it, so it didn't change the radar signature and into where they were missiles and bombs. And uh, that, that was the first set that they did. And then they had another bomb. It's called the Rocks Bomb, and it's supersonic. So you got the first missile there, the Rampage missile, has a super high, uh, uh, several different kinds of navigational systems. So the, the redundancy is so bad that they all hit exactly where they're aimed. Then after that, you've got the Rocks missiles that are, uh, they're supersonic. Then after that, you've got the Jericho missile that has uh, nuclear warheads on it. And, and then it even talked about a new Popeye turbo missile that will be fired from, from uh, uh, submarines in the Red Sea and uh, in the Persian Gulf there. So you've got, you got Israel uh, t 
tantamount to all this stuff into the in the Jerusalem Post showing the weaponry they have. And in the middle of that, you have America send them, the, I believe it's the high altitude uh, defense system, that, that TAD system is showing up this week with American soldiers learning how to run it. So you have Israel touting how strong they are, and I'm not even given all the information they gave out. They're trying to freak Iran out. I like it talked about when Nasrallah got killed a couple of weeks ago that the rest of their high guys took off and ran. So you got Israel systematically going after the leaders of these uh, wars. So you got Israel being hit again by Hamas. Israel being hit every single day by Hezbollah, and you had the Houthis fire more missiles again, and you even had some firing from Syria. So you have all these nations completely surrounding Israel because there's a change coming, and that is uh, there's a, a bowing down literally to ask for the Messiah to come in. So you're watching the pressure build up for exactly what the Bible says you see just before the coming of the Lord. I mean, the players for the Ezekiel 38 war get more and more blatant and more and more pronounced every week, and it just shocks me. Uh, with Israel naming all their weaponry and basically touting how strong they're going to be, I love that uh, Israel is going to have to do what they have to do to shut this down. So great changes coming. There's a setup for the Antichrist, and Jesus is just about to come back. So why did the Lord tell us all this? He said, when you see these things, lift up your heads. Your redemption draws nigh. He didn't say freak out about it. He said, no, get excited. Don't be downtrodden. Be excited. Be blessed. Because all this information is because he loves you. He wants to bless you. He wants to encourage you. There is no bad news for the church. This is all about war right now. But for the church, there is no bad news. In fact, if you if you hear end time preaching, it scares you. It's not being taught correctly. Because for us, we're, we're going to be evacuated. We're about to be raptured, about to be caught up. But I believe we still have a little bit of time to hustle, and these things that we see happening should push us to hustle. In fact, it should make us help our local church, help our local pastor, and, and do more in a short period of time than we ever have. So let's always go to the Word, though, because all these things that are happening around Israel, and I'm probably forgetting two or three things, they're just they're massive in, in what they're saying and preaching to us how close we are. But the Word's real clear. Israel made a nation in 48, Jerusalem won back in 67. Jesus said the generation that sees those two events won't pass away till all is fulfilled. So you got the revival of the, the, the language that was dead. God said He'd restore to them a pure language. You have the Ethiopian Jews brought back. You've got the fertility of the land of Israel. You've got the revival of the Roman Empire. You've got foxes show up on the Temple Mount. You've got fish show up in the Dead Sea. You had the Dead Sea turn blood red where Sodom and Gomorrah was last fall. That's remarkable in the fact that it happened on the Day of Atonement. So uh, God's trying everything He can to get everybody's attention. Now, I don't need signs. I have a witness in my spirit that Jesus is about to come back. But the Lord's so cool, He's, he's going to make it blatant. So you have many, many more signs. You've got 172 different species of predatory birds start showing up in the land. Right after the Ezekiel 38 war, God calls on the fowl of the air to clean the land up. Seven years later, the Battle of Armageddon calls on the fowl of the air again to clean the land up. So you've got uh, birds in position, fish in position, foxes in position. You have the ritual baths around the Temple Mount fill up with water. You have the, the red heifers that got shipped from Texas to Israel. The amazing thing is they didn't have their ears clipped because of COVID, so they were the first animals, the first uh, red heifers that were there without a blemish. How they got them there, they flew them there from Texas and said these are service animals. I guess that would be pretty radical to be walking down the aisle of the airport with a cow. But anyway, they're there and they've already started clipping the ears of the ones that are coming over now. And the ones they have now are between year two and year three. And that's exactly how old they have to be for sacrifice. So you got things like this uh, preaching to us. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. You had a Rabbi Exat Kaduri prophesied that Israel will be ruled by two Benjamins, uh, and that's what happened during COVID, having exactly like he prophesied. You had the, 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 really the archway for Baal worship up in, up in Palmyra where the Tower of Babel was. You had it remade by Russia. And the Bible says, the Talmud says, that's the last sign you'll see right before the coming of the Messiah. So there's sign after sign after sign after sign. Our book, End Times Made Easy, I think there's 79 or 80 signs in there. Uh, it's just remarkable when you look at it in front of it, it, is, it tells you, okay, we have zero time left, so let's make changes. The amazing thing is how quiet it is. You think the church would just be going ballistic. Look how close we are to the coming of the Lord. So there's many, many more signs. So you go from signs to signals. You had blood red moons on, uh, on Passover and Tabernacles a few years ago. Remarkable to have them uh, right when, when Passover he died for us. Tabernacles, he's going to come back and tabernacle with men. So the blood moons were indicative of, I died for you, coming back. Died for you, coming back. When's the last time you had four in a row like that on Passover and Tabernacles?
1967 when Jerusalem was won back. 1948 when Israel was made a nation. 1492 at the Edict of Expulsion when the Jews were kicked out of Spain. So it's just amazing to have things like that happening right when in, in coinciding with things with Israel. I mean, it's just wild. And, and then you have the Bethlehem Star. Think about the Bethlehem Star uh, when it comes to signals. I mean, you, you can't get any more radical than that. Jupiter, Regulus, Venus. When Jesus was born, the constellation was Virgo. We had that happen this last year. Jupiter, Regulus, and Venus again. The constellation was Leo. He's the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So you go from signs to signals, and you have all these heavenly signals. There's no way to even cover what's been happening with the moons that have been happening, super moons. And then you had the eclipses. In 2017, there was so much that happened in the heavens. I told the Lord, I said, if you don't come back this year, you're missing a wonderful opportunity. So, so the heavens are preaching to us. The nations are preaching to us because they're in position. So all these things are to get everything in order because the king's about to come back. Wow, we're about to see him face to face. Jesus, think about it. He died for you, raised from the dead, glorified, the righteous one, the glorious one. We're about to see him face to face. Come back next week. We'll look at what happened. It wouldn't surprise me at all for Israel to hit Iran in this next week. So we'll see what happens this next week. Have a blessed, wonderful week. We'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in to Prophetic News tonight. We hope you subscribe to stay updated on the latest in the realm of prophecy.